There are three major categories of quantitative study design that we will examine in this module. Experimental studies are randomized controlled studies or randomized controlled clinical trials. These studies have a dependent and an independent variable. It is easy to remember the difference between the two because the quantity of the dependent variable depends on whether the subject was in the experimental group or the control group. In other words, it depends on the level or amount of the independent variable that the subject was exposed to. These studies are used to test hypotheses. Studies are double-blind if neither the researcher nor the participant know which participants are in the treatment group while the study is going on. Here's an example of an experimental study in which the researcher wants to know whether weight-bearing exercise reduces osteoporosis. Here's a typical protocol for an experimental study in which the subjects are randomly assigned to treatment groups. Sometimes it is not practical or not ethical to randomly assign people to groups. When random assignment cannot occur, the study is a quasi-experimental study. The subjects are not randomized to the treatment groups. Other aspects of the design are the same as for a true experimental design. In observational studies, the researchers observe and record results without making a manipulation. There are many types of observational studies and these are coming up next. In a cohort study, exposure to the risk factor is established and the researcher follows people over time to record who gets the disease of interest. This is a prospective study. In historical study, both the exposure to the risk factor and the disease status are known, and the researcher uses historical data to define a risk group. One might ask, what percentage of the people in the study that are known to have a disease had the risk compared to the percentage of people who did not have the disease? This is a retrospective study. In a case control study, exposure to the risk factor is not known, but the disease status is. The researcher then looks back to examine the proportion of people with the disease who were exposed to the risk factor and the proportion of those without the disease who were exposed. This is also a retrospective study. Case series studies are used to describe the presentation of a disease. A case report is a special kind of case series study in which the presentation is of a single patient. Prevalence surveys are conducted to assess the prevalence of a specific disease in a specific time and a specific place. In cross-sectional studies, both current exposure to the risk factor and current disease status are examined at the same time and only once. These are snapshots of the relationship between the risk factor and the disease. Longitudinal studies are cross-sectional studies in which the disease status of the patient is assessed repeatedly over a period of time. This can help to establish disease trends in a population. Ecological studies are studies in which populations rather than individuals are the participants. The next two slides are visual guides to observational study designs. Studies can also have a qualitative study design. To conduct qualitative studies, researchers use anthropological techniques such as ethnographic observations, open-ended questions, and focus groups. The researcher especially wants to avoid projecting her or his own biases into the study. The researcher really wants to learn from the participants and does not have a preconception of what the participants find important. Such studies are used to detect patterns in participants' responses and to utilize insights provided by the responses. Studies with different study designs can be used to either generate hypotheses or to test hypotheses as shown in this figure. The next three slides present the pros and cons of each type of study design. 